There are people like my sect of Islam which taught us that Islam is a religion of peace. The slogan of our sect of Islam was love for all, hatred for none. So we were taught to love everyone and that Islam truly was a religion of peace. So I, when I told people Islam is a religion of peace, when I saw 9-11 happen and those buildings getting knocked down, my response was, how could this happen in the name of my faith? Literally, who hijacked my faith and those planes to make Islam look violent? It was at that time that I started investigating this matter deeply because I started conversing with friends and they would say things like, well, you've got verses in the Quran that are rather violent. For example, chapter 9, verse 5. Lay siege to the infidels, take them captive and kill them wherever you find them. That's kind of violent. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, but that was in a context of a war where the Muslims were trying to defend themselves. And so that wasn't a violent verse. That was a verse about defense and that was the context. But was it? As I started investigating, I truly did believe that the context was all defensive battles in the Quran. But the more I investigated, the more I realized that was simply not the case. Chapter 9, verse 5. Okay, so chapter 9 is the most violent chapter of the Quran. It's Surah At-Tawbah. And this is the very same chapter which says, fight the Jews and Christians until they pay the jizya and feel humiliated. That's chapter 9, verse 29. This is the same chapter in uh, chapter 9, verse 111, and I think this is one of the scariest verses of the Quran. Chapter 9, verse 111 says, the reason Allah has bought your person and your property is this, so you may slay in battle and be slain. In other words, you're a Muslim, so you can kill and die in battle. And so I had to contextualize that. Somehow I had to say, this cannot be what Muslims are told to do. But as I studied the history of early Islam, I found out that actually chapter 9 of the Quran is the last major chapter to have been revealed. In other words, right before Muhammad dies, it's as if he calls people to his deathbed and says, I've got some more instructions to give you. That's just a metaphorical language I'm using, but it's like, this is the last message I want to leave with you. Chapter 9 of the Quran, the most violent one there is. When we consider the Bible, and people will say, well, what, what ISIS is doing, didn't Obama say something like this recently? What ISIS is doing is no better or no worse than the Crusades. It's no better or no worse than what happened in Christian history. I say, no, 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 no. You, you, you got to keep things in their appropriate context. In the Bible, the violence did happen. We cannot sidestep it, and, and you didn't ask this question, so if someone else wants to ask it, that's fine. But there was violence in the Old Testament, and there was there are specific circumstances and things that we should talk about with that, so someone please ask. But it did not end up that way. That wasn't the final marching order of God. What we were left with was turn the other cheek. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Give your enemy something to drink if they're thirsty. That's what we were left with. Complete grace and peace. Flip that around for Islam. In the early, the Meccan days of Islamic history, the message was very, very peaceful. Jews, Christians, Sabians, all of you, if you do good deeds and good works and you fear God on the last day for you is heaven. Whereas towards the end, we start hearing things like anyone who comes before Allah without Islam as their religion, their religion will not be accepted. It goes the other direction. So how do we distill all this? There's also the matter of Islamic traditions, hadith. You know, we as, I'm guessing most of us here are Protestant, there may be Catholics, and you'll understand this as well. Protestants have kind of a sola scriptura lens. It's like the Bible is my authority and that's it. Muslims are not like that. The Quran is their greatest authority, sure, but then they have whole swaths of Islamic tradition called hadith. And the hadith are the lens through which the Quran is often applied. So, Sunni Muslims often use books like Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, in order to see how Muhammad lived, what was it that he did. By the way, Muhammad's name is only mentioned four times in the Quran. Now, it's not a book of history about Muhammad's life. So people go to the Hadith to see how Muhammad lived. And because there are so many Hadith, people can point to the peaceful ones and say, that's how Islam should be. And you've got people like ISIS pointing to the violent ones, saying, that's how Islam should be. Who is right? Who is right? And can you make Islam whatever you want to make it? 
My concluding statement here is that peaceful Muslims who say Islam is a religion of peace are not lying to you. They honestly believe it. I did. But they haven't investigated the original sources, or at least they have done so in a way that wasn't, uh, wasn't faithful to the, to the timeline of events. Early Islam was, in fact, rather violent. Islam, even under Muhammad's time, did have offensive wars against Jews and Christians. And that rendering of Islamic history is what leads people to diligently or faithfully live a violent Islam. I hesitate to say this, but I think it's true. If I still believed in Islam, and if I wanted to be faithful to Muhammad, I would have a hard time not going to Syria right now to fight for ISIS. It seems like they're doing what Islam commands.